Good evening, everyone. It's good to have everyone out with us tonight. Visiting with us, we invite you to come back anytime you can. Worship with us online, we're glad that you're here as well. First song this evening will be Mansion Over the Hilltop. Mansion Over the Hilltop. Mansion Over the Hilltop. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city, where the rest will shine, I want a gold one, that silver line. I've got a mansion just over the tonight will be, oh, why not tonight? Oh, why not tonight? After this song, we'll have our opening prayer, and then we'll have our lesson. <clears throat> Tempted and tried, we're open to wonder why it should be
bow with me, please. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this another beautiful day of life that you bless us with, Father. Father, we just thank you for all the many wonderful blessings that you bestow, bestow upon us daily, Father. We we thank you for all of these, Father. Father, we just ask you at this time to be with those who are sick and hurting, Father, those in hospitals or nursing homes. Father, we just ask you to be with them, Father, and restore their health back to them if you will. Especially be with those out from the congregation, uh, Sister Wilma and, and Brother Robert and, and Jack, and, and there's so many others, Father, we just ask you to be with, be with all of them, Father, and just bless them. Father, we just ask you to be with those who are grieving over lost loved ones, Father, just come to them in the way that you know how. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come out and study from your word. This midweek Bible study, Father, we just ask you to be with the teachers, give them a good remembrance of the things that they prepared to bring to their classes, Father. Father, we just ask you, Father, just to forgive us of our sins. You know that we are weak and, and do err. And Father, we just ask you to forgive us of these things. Father, we thank you, Father, so much for sending your Son to die upon the cross, Father, that through him we may have hope of eternal life, Father. Father, we thank you again for all things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 It's good to see you tonight. There are a few here that have been gone for a little while because of different illnesses and sicknesses, and it's good to see them, and hope that you're doing well tonight. If you would, turn your Bibles to Psalm 139, verse 14. That's where we're going to get some of our thoughts this, this evening. Psalm 139, verse 14. I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. I get this lesson from Bill Bajens, who many of you might know from Heritage. Uh, well, that's how I know Bill. Uh, but he is an excellent preacher and wrote a, a really good devotional book, and I'm taking this from him. And he mentions that he went to a thrift store one time and found a really good coaster. And that coaster was 75 cents, and it said this. It said, you're very, very unique, just like everybody else. And he said that that was worth 75 cents. He said he was glad that he bought that. Uh, and then he, we read a passage like this, you know, I'll praise you. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, when I say that about myself, you know, I, I can see it. I can see it. You know, God it, fearfully and wonderfully made. Almost, practically perfect, as Mary Poppins says. Practically perfect in every way. And, you know, I know that probably you... Of course, y'all wouldn't say that. Y'all are better than me. But y'all y'all might say this same thing in some ways about yourself. Because we see the world through our own perspective. We look at a passage like this and we think, you know, the Lord, uh, as the I believe it was Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, God spent a little bit more time on me. Or, you know, he spent a little bit more time on, on my life. And I can see how God has worked in my life and done the things that he has done in my life. But then when it comes to the other person, well, I don't know, you know, God, God may have missed a few screws and bolts when he was putting them together. God may have forgotten a few things when he was putting them together. And we have this perspective sometimes, maybe not outrightly, maybe, maybe it's more subconscious than actually conscience. But, you know, sometimes we have this thought when we're communicating with others during church work. It happens when we're communicating with people at work, at our regular day jobs. It happens when we're going about in different ways of life, maybe in our relationships or maybe what's happening, that we look at our situation as being a little bit different. You don't know about my story. You don't know about me. And so the way that we live, the way that we communicate with others and what we bring to the table is that I'm different, and therefore we can fall into the trap of thinking that maybe God loves me a little bit more. But I'm glad that we serve a God that loves all of us. He loves you and he loves me. That when the psalmist here says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. What's really great about that passage is it's not just me reading it. That there have been years and years and years of people reading it with the same truth and the same understanding and stating the same fact 
God has made each and every one of us. And he made us wonderfully and fearfully. That God loves that person that we're having a hard time loving. That it may not seem at the time that he was fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> that it doesn't feel like that they were, that God spent any more time on them than he spent on us. That he spent less time on them than he spent on us. And this evening, I think that we have to change the way that we communicate that. We have to change the way that we think of that. That all people in this world are in need of God's love. And all people can receive God's love equally. If you would, remember this passage as I turn to it. Romans chapter 12, you can turn to it as well. Romans chapter 12, specifically in verse 3. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. I used to uh, have a counselor that said that, you know, Baron, sometimes they talk about this passage. Don't think too highly of yourself where there's actually there's the same thought in a different vein. Don't think too lowly of yourself. Think of yourself soberly. God wants to rescue you and wants to save you just as much as he wants to save your next door neighbor. He wants to rescue you and he wants to save you just as much as he wants to rescue and save that person sitting in jail right now for drunk driving. He wants to save you and he wants to rescue you just as much as the pedophile spending a thousand years in prison. He wants to save you and he wants to rescue you just as much as everyone on this earth. And when we forget that in our mission here on this planet... We forget why God has brought us and put in, brought us into this church. Why he sent the son to die on that cross. So let's not forget what God has made us to be. The people who share his story. If you need anything tonight, know that God wants to rescue you and save you. He wants you to be rescued and to be saved. And tonight, the way that that happens, if you've never been baptized, it's to, receive, it's to be baptized for the remission of your sins, as it says in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Maybe tonight you've been baptized, but the problem is, is that you know that you haven't been living the way that you should be living. Maybe it's because you haven't been as humble as you know you ought to be. You've been prideful. You've been looking at your neighbors. You've been looking at your enemies. And all that's filled your heart is hate. And tonight we want to pray for that forgiveness. Whatever, we, whatever you need. We're here for you. As together we stand and as we sing. Oh, do not let the word be born.